Hello and welcome to Baiju's IAS. Let's take up the daily quiz for today. The first question: Which of the following statements are correct? The National Health Mission is an exclusive healthcare program for the rural areas. States have no role in its implementation. It is entirely executed by the center. Both the statements are incorrect. So option D is the right answer. The National Health Mission was launched as a flagship healthcare program of the center in 2013, and it subsumed two existing schemes: that is, the National Rural Health Mission and the National Urban Health Mission, which were launched by the then Manmohan Singh government. These two schemes provided for exclusive focus with regard to healthcare in rural and urban areas, respectively, and both were subsumed under the National Health Mission. So this makes the first statement incorrect. This broad overarching healthcare scheme provides for special focus for reproductive health, maternal, neonatal and infant healthcare and as well as for communicable diseases and non-communicable diseases. In the implementation of this mission, both center and states play a key role and it is not just the center, hence the second statement is also incorrect. In fact, even with regard to funding, the funding is shared between the center and the states. in a 60 to 40 ratio for most of the states and for few special states it's in the ratio of 90 is to 10 in fact the states play a lead role in the implementation of the mission as public health is a state subject this question on the national health mission was taken up because we have an article in the hindu that makes a reference to the national health mission as we have discussed in previous sessions few state governments are issuing global tenders to procure their own covid-19 vaccines as state governments are facing a severe shortage of vaccines due to the initial hiccups faced in the vaccination strategy of the center according to this article rajasthan is looking to float a global tender for procuring vaccines under the national health mission let's look at the second question which of the following statements are correct mucor mycosis is a fungal infection caused by a group of molds called as mucor mycetes poor immunity uncontrolled diabetes steroid treatment are considered to be risk factors it is commonly referred to as black fungus and has been reported in patients recovering from covid-19 all the three statements are correct option d is the right answer this question has been taken up because we have an editorial in the hindu and as well as a press release from the ministry of health and family welfare that cautions the public about the rising cases of mucor mycosis are also known as black fungus which happens to be one of the post recovery complications being seen in covid-19 patients see this disease is essentially a fungal infection and it is caused when people come in contact with fungal spores which are present in the environment but when regular people with strong immunity come in contact with these fungal spores they are not affected because their immune system fights against it it doesn't allow the mold to grow inside the body and as a result the fungal infection is not caused or very rarely caused in regular people but those who have very low immunity and whose immune systems are suppressed they become highly vulnerable to this fungal infection according to studies on post covid 19 complications it has been found out that those suffering from uncontrolled diabetes and those who have weak immune systems due to over usage of steroids and those who have multiple comorbidities and those who have been exposed to prolonged icu or hospital stays they are highly vulnerable to this fungal infection this fungal fold which is a microorganism it is naturally found in the environment and it is usually seen in soil and other decaying organic matter and when covid-19 patients who have been treated with high dosage of steroids and if they have high unregulated diabetes then they become vulnerable to this fungal infection it has even been reported that those undergoing oxygen therapy in icus where oxygen humidifiers are used even they are prone to this fungal infection because of exposure to moisture because in such moist conditions the black fungus will thrive and those covid-19 patients with low immunity and suppressed immunity they become vulnerable to the infection this fungal growth is usually reported in the ent kennel and it can cause severe damage to the eye nose jaws as well as to throat lungs and even to the brain if not treated early the disease can even become fatal and in many cases the affected tissue has to be entirely removed 
This rare infection has emerged as a major concern in cities across India as the country is battling the second wave of the pandemic. And the only course of treatment is to put the patients on expensive antifungal therapies. And if these treatments fail to yield results, then the infected parts will have to be entirely removed. Hence, the writer of this column cautions the patients to be very mindful of any possible symptoms, even post-recovery, and especially diabetes patients who have been admitted to ICUs and who have been subjected to high-dosage steroids. They need to constantly monitor their blood glucose levels and immediately seek medical attention at the sign of any symptoms. Now, let's look at the third question. Who was referred to as Deen Bandhu for his contributions to the Indian independence movement? Bal Gangadhar Tilak, C.F. Andrews, Jyotirao Govindra Phule, Madan Mohan Malviya. The correct answer is option B, C.F. Andrews. C.F. Andrews was a Christian missionary and a social worker born in England who moved to India and made an immense contribution to India's freedom struggle. He became a very close friend and confidant of Rabindranath Tagore and Mahatma Gandhi and it is even said that he played a key role in convincing Gandhi to shift to India from South Africa. C.F. Andrews is known for his work in uplifting the poor and hence he was given the title Dina Bandhu by Mahatma Gandhi himself. Then later C.F. Andrews even played a key role in putting an end to the indentured labour system under which Indians were being transported to British colonies far away where they were being forced to work under extremely harsh conditions as a replacement to slavery which had been abolished by Britain. In small Indian Ocean British colonies like Fiji, many Indians had been transported to work in the sugar plantations and C.F. Andrews headed a committee to report on the living and working conditions of these Indians and his reports were instrumental in bringing pressure on the British government to finally abolish the indentured labour system in 1920. Then you should also note that most of the leading figures of India's freedom struggle were given honorary titles such as Lokmanya Tilak for Bal Gangadhar Tilak and the title of Mahatma was also given for Jyoti Rao Phule for his immense contribution to social reforms and the title Pandit was given to Madan Mohan Malviya. This question was taken up because C.F. Andrews finds a mention in the 100 years ago article of the Hindu. This article refers to the protests of C.F. Andrews against British policies which included the imprisonment of young students, prohibition of wearing Gandhi caps and the blatant use of section 144 of the Indian Penal Code. Let's look at the fourth question. What is the purpose of the National Register of Citizens or the NRC? To identify native and indigenous tribes and distinguish them from outsiders. To document all the legal citizens so that illegal immigrants can be identified. To facilitate the rehabilitation of those facing religious persecution in neighboring countries or none of the above. The correct answer is option B. NRC is essentially a register or a document that contains the list of legal citizens of India which helps in distinguishing them from illegal immigrants. This question has been taken up because the NRC which has been conducted in Assam finds a mention in this article of the Hindu. Now let's take up a practice question from the 2019 prelims paper. Consider the following statements. Most of India's external debt is owed by governmental entities. All of India's external debt is denominated in US dollars. Both the statements are incorrect, so option D is the right answer. See, according to data made available by the Ministry of Finance, most of India's external debt is not owed by governmental entities. External commercial borrowings, especially by private institutions, is far higher than governmental debt and hence the first statement is incorrect. The second statement is also incorrect because India's external debt is not just denominated in US dollars, but it is also denominated in other currencies such as the euro, the special drawing rights of the IMF, etc. Now coming to the fact of the day, let's talk about Lord Basavanna and his contributions. Because today on the occasion of Basava Jayanti, Prime Minister himself has tweeted about the significant contribution of Lord Basavanna to Indian society. See, Lord Basavanna or Mahatma Basaveshwara was a 12th century Indian statesman and a philosopher and poet who was born and brought up in the northern parts of today's Karnataka at a place known as Kudula Sangama in the Bagalkot district. He was considered as a pioneer of the Bhakti movement and he is even widely believed to be the founder of the Lingayat sect 
which is focused on Shaivism or on the worship of Lord Shiva. And he is primarily known for his immense contributions towards reforming the Indian society. Even though he is widely believed to be the founder of the Lingayat sect, modern scholarship suggests that he just revived an existing tradition because the Virashaiva Lingayat sect traces back its origin to the 10th century. But nevertheless, Basavana did play a critical role in reviving this movement and he carried out tremendous social reforms during the reign of the Kalyani Chalukyas and the Kalachuri dynasty in northwestern parts of Karnataka. He is considered as a phenomenal thinker, philosopher and poet and a progressive social reformer who spread social awareness through his poetry which was popularly known as Vachanas and he contributed immensely to Vachana Sahitya and Kannada literature. Through his teachings and writings, he rejected gender discrimination and social discrimination and he also strictly opposed any superstition and rituals which had become an essential part of Hindu practices. He was known for his revolutionary thought and he even stood up against established authority to challenge orthodoxy and ritual-based worship that was prevalent in Hinduism. He predominantly challenged Brahmin elitism within Hinduism and he even championed Veera Shaiva Linga etc. against the Brahmin-dominated caste hierarchy of Hinduism. Later, he even introduced new public institutions such as Anubhava Mantapa, which was essentially a platform for all men and women from all socio-economic backgrounds to come and discuss and debate on spiritual questions and as well as on other essential questions of life. And through this platform, social reforms were advocated against caste discrimination and he even laid out the Bhakti Marga for worshipping Lord Shiva and he outright rejected blind worship through temples and rituals and his teachings through his Vachanas are extremely popular even today. It is in this recognition of his contribution that multiple statues of Lord Baswana have come up not just in Karnataka but also within the parliament building in New Delhi and as well as in London along the Thames River facing the UK parliament. For his era, he was considered as a progressive thinker and a reformer and his contributions to the Bhakti movement and the Indian society are marked and celebrated on this day which happens to be Basava Jayanti. So with this, let's conclude our discussion for today. Thanks for watching.